Okay, I have a lot to go over, so let's rapid fire this first one. Happy Friday, folks. My low is the fact that I didn't really sleep very well last night. Not sure why, I'm probably gonna, it's probably gonna hit me later. I don't care, I need to talk about this now. My high is yesterday's episode of Hot Ones and seeing you inside our tea yesterday, but I will be talking about that momentarily. And my act of kindness was, I actually got part of my Father's Day gift uh, yesterday for my dad. I also got my uh, Father's Day card for my grandfather. So uh, I put in some work yesterday. So, listen, straight up the bulk of this video may very well be talking about Inside Out 2. So, let's hopefully, let's, let's get through yesterday's episode of Hot Ones as quickly and efficiently as possible. Although, speaking of which, I, this was like the shortest episode Hot Ones has had in a long time. Like, seriously, most episodes of Hot Ones are only like, are like 20 to 25 minutes, sometimes even like almost a full half hour. This was like not even 17 minutes long. What can I say, man? Shane Gales is actually tougher regarding hot sauce than, real, than he thinks. Um, well, Shane Gales is on the show, is on How Was Growing Tires, and literally the first question Sean asks is, um, you know, what makes tire shops so funny? And honestly, you really could ask that about any typical workplace. It's just there's crazy people just working together. I mean... Regarding tires, there is actually a script, but people add to it as time goes on, which makes tires... I haven't seen tires, but this is what Shane Gillis says. Um, he talked about how, like, annoying that... For, how annoying it is for some stand specials to have, like, a sort of a clip or a vignette before, like, their special begins. And how, like, in naming a stand-up special is more spontaneous than it is planned. Like, he came up with um, Beautiful Dogs, which is his stand special on Netflix, from like this one random guy who said Beautiful Dogs. That should be the name of your special. So he did it. That's pretty spontaneous to me. Um, though he collects uh, US memorabilia and he thinks his best, um, his best piece of US memorabilia is a painting called The Absolution of uh, Gettysburg, which is um, this one, which basically is this one priest like saying goodbye to soldiers that are presumably off to go to war and die. But pretty tough. Um, he talked about how um, a comedy nightmare is now the days that crowds are, are really rowdy when you go to, when they, when they go to shows. And how his like worst um, experience was in Bakersfield, where he was, Bakersfield, California, when he was heckled by uh, oil workers. Um, he actually did play college football for like one year and then he quit. But he thought like, but he but he believes that the most disgusting thing about as a football player is like guys like puking and you know pants related issues, as in. Um, having accidents in your pants. Um, he loves watching the WNBA, which, I mean, thank you, Caitlin Clark. Um, when he got to the sixth wing, Sean just talked about how he almost choked on a wing while talking to John Bernthal, which I forgot that happened. I mean, I guess Sean did a really good job of, um, you know, hiding it. But then Sean's like, how stupid would it be for me to die because I choked on a wing? Anyway, um, it's funny. Uh, Sean brought up when Cohen was on the show, they talked about like his uh, all time favorite mediocre president. And for Shane Gillis, his all time favorite mediocre president is uh, Grant. Although the most physically attractive is the tie between Barack Obama and George W. Bush. When he was younger, that is. Um, the Mount Rushmore of gas station snacks is beef jerky, sunflower seeds, Cool Ranch Doritos, and Dunkaroos, according to Shane Gillis. Um, okay. I mean, I do like Dunkaroos. I haven't had it in a long time, but I do like Dunkaroos. 
It's been a long time since I've had beef jerky, but I like beef. Actually, I do like everything on this Mount Rushmore. It's just the only one that's the most appealing to me is the Cool Ranch Doritos. Um, let's see. He talked about how the funniest prank phone call he ever did was when he was in college. He called his parents telling him he got arrested for drugs when he was in North Carolina. Which, I'm not going to lie, I wouldn't, I don't have the cojones that big to pull a prank like that on my parents. No way. And with all those Scoville units coursing through his body, Shane Gillis made a guess that he spent about a thousand hours of his own life podcasting. Sorry if this is, uh, sorry if this, me talking about Hollins isn't as um, well detailed as it normally is, but uh, I need to save a bulk of this for talking about Inside Out too. So let's begin. Um, so, and you know, before I really get into talking about my thoughts on Inside Out 2, I need to point something out. In yesterday's video, I talked about how when the first Inside Out movie came out, Pixar really was desperate for a hit. You know, at that time, you had, I mean, the only good movie to come out after Toy Story 3 was Brave, but even that didn't really get the reviews and box office numbers it should have gotten. The other movies were Cars 2 and Monsters University. No bueno. So when Inside Out, the first one, came out, like, it was the hit that needed to bring Pixar back to the forefront as to why Pixar wasn't just a household name, it was arguably the household name. So, it's funny how nine years later, Pixar, in a way, has found themselves in a similar predicament. Because before the pandemic started, you had the movie Onward, which, funny enough, was the last movie I ever saw in theaters before the pandemic started. And I liked Onward, but from what I hear for a lot of people, it didn't really click for, click for them, but I really liked it. And then you have the pandemic starting, and, you know, you had movies like Turning Red and Luca, which were on Disney+, Plus, and they did eventually get into theaters, but... Like, you can tell right away that for both Turning Red and Luca, like, they need to be, like, on the big screen, like, right away. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And, while well, I'm sure they, I don't know the box office numbers when they were released back in the theaters, but I'm sure they both would have gotten more, more numbers had they actually been released in theaters. But, you know, due to the pandemic, you couldn't do that. As for the actual movies as of late that have been released in theaters, you had Lightyear, which, I'm not going to lie, I love watching the trailer for Lightyear, but from what I hear, I can definitely see why the movie didn't really click with a lot of people. And then you had Elemental, which, for those of you who don't know, Elemental, which came out last year, it had the worst opening weekend for a Pixar movie ever. Oh, don't get me wrong. It eventually picked up steam. It made back its money. But being that movie to have, like, your worst opening box office weekend, that's not a good thing. So I bring this up because much like for the first Inside Out movie, Inside Out 2 is actually just the movie that Pixar needed. I love this movie. This movie was fan-freaking-tastic. Like, this is the movie to bring Pixar back once again. You know, what can I say? Pete Docter went and made himself the Godfather Part 2 of Pixar sequels. And... What's most, you know, I'll get to, I'll get to that, I'll get to what I'm about to say, I was about to say at the end of this video. But, um, the way the movie starts is, uh, you know, Riley's 13 now, He's, she's been in San Francisco, California for a few years at that point. You know, she's really big into hockey, she's made a few friends, which is awesome. But uh, after this one championship game that her team, the Fogboards, win, 
the high school uh, hockey coach and walks up and says, hey, I'm going to provide you guys a camp, you know, come with it, maybe you'll make the team. And it turns out that Riley's friends are, you know, not, um, are not going to be at the same high school as, you know, Riley is. On the flip side of that, Riley is also going through puberty. Which, they don't get into any of the gross teenage stuff. It's Pixar. I don't think they would do that. But emotionally, lots of things change. You know, teenagers can get over emotional. They can get too sad. They can get, they can lash out in anger too much. But, it's also a time for new emotions to show up. Which leads to four new emotions. Anxiety. Envy. Ennui, which is essentially French for boredom, and embarrassment. Actually, hold on, let me just do one thing beforehand. Because I forgot to I forgot to get my notes out for Inside Out 2. The main thing regarding in the first movie, it was about having core memories and how you know, they are, like, the things that ultimately, you know, um, you know, define, like, they are the things that stick out in your mind the most. In this movie, however, the main, you know, plot point, or the main, um, lesson from this movie is how someone has a sense of self. These are the things that a person believes in. These are the things that, you know, like, no matter what happens in life, they are your core values. They are what, they are who you really are. And on the flip side of that, you have, just like in the first movie, how like, you're like, sad, stop messing everything up. In this movie, you want to be like, anxiety, stop messing everything up. But you know what? Guess what? Lots of people have anxiety. Lots of people have envy. Lots of people have embarrassment. Lots of people can get bored. That's fine. However, they also show what happens when you bottle your primary, where you suppress your primary emotions. But guess what? You, um, you need... You need that cocktail of emotions. You need them all. Like, and I love how the movie also talks about how not one emotion should ultimately define who you are. Because both joy and anxiety, both voiced by Amy Poehler and Maya Hawk, they both try and be that one defining emotion that defines Riley. And more often than not, it leads to bad results. And that's a very important lesson for everybody to learn. You can't let one emotion or one experience define who you are. And sorry, this was a lot easier to talk about in my head when I was like thinking about what I was going to say before I start pressing, before I press record. So. Anxiety pushes, you know, joy, anger, sadness, disgust, and fear to essentially, like, the vault of, like, suppressed things and stuff like that. I forget what it's called at the moment. And they run into my favorite side character, Bloofy. Voice by Ron Funches. Yes! I love me some Ron Funches, man. I love that Ron Funches is Bloofy, who's essentially a parody of, um... Door the Explorer. He, he even has a talking pouch named Pouchy that has like a bunch of items in the pouch or whatever. Usually it's dynamite, which leads to a great joke later. Hands down though, one of my favorite moments of the movie is, um, Bluffy is doing like, we need to find a way out of here. Can you find us a way out of here? Just like Door the Explorer would. And Anger's like, who are you talking to? Which I gotta say, Lewis Black is back voicing Anger. Just like in the first one, he's still my favorite. But here's the thing, though. In the first movie where Anger, while he was more sort of antagonistic in a way, 
there are several moments where anger has been the voice of reason. And I mean that in the best possible way. And I love that. They even bring back how, which, okay. Man, it's hard for me to talk about this because I don't want to spoil anything. I mean, this movie was just so good. This movie was just absolutely amazing. Like, if I have any sort of criticism or nitpick at all, it's, I mean, I talked about this at nauseam yesterday and in the past, where the first Inside Out movie was the first Pixar movie to ever get me to cry. And this movie didn't get me to cry. But I almost did. I almost cried. I don't want to say where or when because, again, it could lead to spoilers. But what I absolutely need to discuss foremost is the overall lesson in this movie. The first lesson is it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel vulnerable. And from it, you get mixed emotions. And it's okay to have mixed emotions. In this movie... You can't have one emotion to find who you are. I mean, for some people, that is how it is. And I mean, I'll admit, sometimes I do let one emotion take over. But I work on that. And that's the beautiful thing about having a sense of self. You need to have all your emotions to make up those core beliefs. I mean, a very obvious belief for me. I believe in God. I've never seen what God actually looks like. I don't know what God looks like, but I believe God exists. That is part of my sense of self. I also firmly believe in not preaching about it. Again, that is my sense of self. And I really could say a firm belief on every single emotion regarding what you see in this movie. Which, which reminds me, Years ago when the first Inside Out movie came out, somebody actually edited the film where it's just the scenes with Riley in it. You don't see the emotions going on inside her head or anything going on inside her for that matter. I can genuinely tell you someone's going to do the exact same thing for this movie and it's going to have the same result. And that is absolutely everybody who watches this movie in any way, shape, or form will connect with Riley in terms of what's going on in this movie. In fact, there are several things I genuinely connected with Riley in this movie. Again, I don't want to give away too much because again, that'd be spoilers. But regarding what I was just saying, having your emotions and what you believe in to have, create your sense of self. I firmly believe I can be embarrassed, but I can learn from it. I believe I can be bored, but I try not to be boring. I believe I can be envious, but you know what? With a little hard work and a little bit of luck, something good's do my way. I can be anxious, but I never let that full on bring me into a panic attack. I know some people who are, which is, you know, that's fine. I can be disgusted with some things, but there are other people I know who aren't disgusted by the things that disgust me. That doesn't make me think any less of them. I've been, there have been plenty of times that I've been afraid, but you know what? I believe that if, I believe it makes things all the better when you face that fear head on, even if the result isn't the greatest. I believe that I can get angry and I have lashed out before. But I try not to, I try and do better that next time. I believe it's very much okay to be sad. It's okay to be vulnerable. It absolutely is. But I also believe that there are times when you just gotta hold, you got, it's okay to do it. You know, there are some times where you can't do it in that moment and that's fine. And I do believe I can be happy. I can be content. But I also believe my life isn't perfect. Again, it's that cocktail, that sort of, I keep saying cocktail, it's that sense of self that ultimately defines 
you know, who we are. And when you put it all together, it's you. And that's the beautiful thing about this movie. I genuinely do believe that, because I said earlier that Pixar absolutely needed a hit. This is the hit that Pixar was looking for. I mean, I know a lot of people are getting sick and tired of the Pixar coming out with sequels and they want original material. Listen, of course I want Pixar to do stuff that's original as well. But with something like Inside Out, considering how many twists and turns can go on in a person's life and how much speculation there can be as to what happens next, I can totally see Inside Out having not just one sequel, but multiple sequels. You know, I want to see what goes on when Riley you know, graduates high school and goes on to college. I want to see what happens when, you know, Riley gets, you know, finds the right person, gets married. You know, I want to see what happens through it all. And no matter what, I know that, like, for sure, Amy Poehler is joy is, well, is a joy to watch, no pun intended. But I can definitely see Amy Poehler pushing for, like, a, uh, a third movie. Like, for sure, like, Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, and Lewis Black all reprise the, all reprise their roles. They fit seamlessly. As for Tony Hale and Liz Lapira, who are a fear and disgust, respectively, no, they're not Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling, but with the latter, like, there are times where Liza, Liza Lett, Lapira, she straight up becomes Mindy Kaling. Same with Tony Hale. Like, there are times I'm like, are you sure you guys got Tony Hale? Because that sounds like Bill Hader. Which is a testament to how good of actors those two are. Mia Hawk, I mean, a lot, I've heard that she steals the show a lot, and she does. In a lot of ways. But I will admit, there are times where I mean, I guess Anxiety's design, character design is slightly off-putting for me because they're trying to say that, like, I guess in just the character design alone, maybe that's, like, maybe that's a metaphor for it's okay to be anxious and have anxiety, but again, don't let that define you. Ayo Edebiri is Envy. She's great. Adeli Exar Chapulos who's uh, Ennui, which is essentially um, bored, boredom. And Paul Walter Hauser's embarrassment is a... Uh, I think embarrassment's going to be a breakout character. Because, I mean, it's show, don't tell. You can, you can literally tell a lot by what embarrassment's doing in this movie. I quite literally, at some point in my life, I felt every single one of these emotions. I know everyone watching this video has also felt every single one of these emotions. And you know what? That's ultimately like the main drive of having a sense of self. Your emotions should enhance your life experiences, not define them. And that's how you get your sense of self. It's funny, in some way, that's exactly what alcohol does. It should enhance your experiences, not define it. Also, before I forget, stay for the end credits. Watch the end, stay for the end credits because the payoff is actually quite hilarious for me. It was for me. I hope you like this video, like, subscribe, YouTube channel, follow me on social media. As always, I enjoy helping this video for all of you guys who watch and enjoy for now. We'll be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. And remember, if you guys want to talk to me, you're going to your back. Take care and make good choices. 607 on day, baby.